Welcome to topic six, in which we're going to think now about the shape of a rotation, rotational absorption spectrum. We know about the peak positions, that was in the last topic, but what about the intensity of these peaks? Well, we know that the transition intensity is going to be go governed by the selection rules. We've already considered those. It's going to be con affected by um, the Beer Lambert law, which we're not going to worry about in this case here. Um, and it's also going to be affected by the Boltzmann distribution. So, and this is to do with the population of the various energy levels. So this is the expression we saw in an earlier topic, which gives us the, the, the relative populations of various energy levels as a function of temperature. For rotational energy levels, we had we de derived this expression here. So the energy gap is Bj j plus one, and that has units of centimeters to the minus one. If we're going to use the Boltzmann equation, we need to remember that we have to put SI units in, so we need to convert um, from centimeters to the minus one to joules, and we do that by multiplying by HC, where C is the speed of light in centimeters per second. So we can now put this in, and this gives us this expression here. So now we need, we need to think about a bit more about this expression. So we haven't yet thought about the degeneracy, we haven't put that in. We saw before, in a previous topic, that a rotational level um, is degenerate, and it's degenerate, it has a degeneracy of 2j plus 1, and this was to do with the different orientations in which the um, angular momentum could point. So we now need to put this um, into the, the Boltzmann equation. So if j is equal to 0, then the degeneracy is equal to 1, so that gives us this 1 here. Otherwise, we have the standard degeneracy of 2j plus 1 here. So now we have the full expression, we need to, and we, we can do a little bit of work with this. We can now think a bit about what this function looks like. And we can do that by breaking it into two components. So we can have the degeneracy part, which I've drawn here in red, and the exponential part, which is in blue. So the degeneracy is given by 2j plus 1. So if we were to plot this degeneracy as a function of j, it would just be a straight line plot. The other term is an exponential. It has a negative sign, so it will look something like this. So it decreases rapidly as j increases. So what do these look like if we put them together? So it gives us a shape which looks like something like this. So the, the, the final shape is something which looks like that. And here we can see that we've superimposed the, the, the transitions, so the, the various lines which occur in the spectrum, with this final shape. So this is what a rotational spectrum would look like if we measured one, taking into account the degeneracy and the populations of the state. We can see we've got a maximum here, so we've got a, a maximum in the intensity at this point here. We can do some maths to work out at what value the maximum is observed. So the starting equation is this one here, and by finding a stationary point of this equation, so finding a point at which the gradient of this expression is equal to zero, we can find the 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 value of j for which this curve reaches a maximum. So this j max, so the j value for which there, there is a maximum, um, is given by this expression here, um, and this we can do um, in the classroom session. And we can put some numbers in, so if you just take a, a molecule, so for example CO, and we take temperature at um, 200 Kelvin, we plug numbers in and we get j max is approximately equal to 6. j max has to be an integer because it's a quantum number um, so um, it doesn't make sense for it not to be a quantum number. So this tells us that the, the, the value, the state with j equals 6 is the most highly occupied in this, in the, for this molecule at this temperature. So this means that the peak with transitions from j equals 6 to j equals 7 is going to be the, the most intense 
in the rotational spectrum. And this is really useful because it means that we can measure a spectrum and use that to work out the temperature. Rotational spectra are actually really useful um, for calculating molecular properties. So if we have a spectrum, we can find the rotational constant, B, and that's easy because the gap between the peaks is equal to 2B. Once we have B, we can obtain the moment of inertia, I, and once we know the, mo the moment of inertia, we can obtain the bond length. So if you measure a rotational absorption spectrum, we can obtain the bond length of the molecule. This is really powerful, and we'll get we'll be practicing this um, lots in the in the workshops. There's a slight complicating factor that we need to think about, um, and this is as molecules gain rotational energy as they spin faster. And that's a classical picture you need to remember. The bond length tends to increase as a result of centrifugal distortion. So. As j, the rotational, con the rotational quantum number increases, the bond length r also increases. And if r increases, this means that i, the moment of inertia, increases, but b, the rotational constant, decreases. So if you remember that the spacing between the peaks in a rotational spectrum is equal to 2b, then this means that the peaks will actually get closer together as you get to higher values of j. We can describe this using a correction factor. So we've got our standard term here, and then this is a correction factor for this centrifugal distortion. Um, typically we use just one term, but we can have higher order corrections if we wish, where d is the centrifugal distortion constant. And it tells you basically how much um, the molecule um, distorts as J increases. Okay, that's the end of this topic. So there's some homework questions for you to do, um, and then we can we can move on.